Welcome to the Software People Stories. I'm Shiv. I'm Chitra. And I'm Gayatri. We bring you interesting untold stories of people associated with the creation or consumption of software-based solutions. You'll hear stories of what worked and sometimes what didn't. You will also hear very personal experiences and insights that would trigger your thoughts and inspire you to do even greater things. conversation with bhuvan anandha krishnan who is a delivery leader and a product leader in caterpillar inc you will hear his very start in software and the passion he found and later he moved and towards a product thinking and in embedded software and how he really moved him as well as his entire team members towards thinking holistically and thinking from a customer's angle and he you also hear his passion towards not just from a delivery perspective but also from using his heart star as well as the dollar concept so listen on hi bhuvan welcome to software people stories thank you so much for doing this bhuvan Gayatri, uh, hi. It has been uh, pretty good catching up with you, and uh, thanks a lot for having me in this session. I want you to introduce um, yourself uh, for our listeners. I know you for a long time, but absolutely, absolutely. So I, uh, I, I actually lead uh, one of the divisions of Caterpillar in, in India. I've been uh, working this company for quite a long time, and uh, before that, I started my career in a company called Satyam. Been in. Uh, Uh, in Satyam for five years, and then I moved into Caterpillar. What for the last twenty years or so, I've been working in uh, in CAN, and I've been uh, an engineering leader in Caterpillar. I've grown in the engineering uh, leadership for right from uh, what we think you started off with by saying that software stories, right? So I I started my career as a software engineer, but over a period of time, I moved into engineering product development kind of a career path, and now I lead a pretty large engineering team in, uh, in India. Excellent, excellent. So let's start from the beginning. What pulled you into the whole being in the software? What was the initial uh, time? Was it during college, during work, or even earlier than that? Uh, it's it probably started off from my uh, after my I finished my engineering. It's not like. Uh, i would say a lot of other people saying that right from the time i was born i was a software engineer right so that's not what what i am so i started my first job after completing my graduation uh, engineering and electronics and communication and right after that my first job i i mentioned to you i started in in satyam so when i started my job in satyam uh, there is a training program where every engineer every person that they recruit goes through this this pretty extensive training program there was the first time to be true i started doing programming by myself till that time uh, you know how we do programming in college i need not say that to you right so you know it's about making sure that uh, we have all the syntax we just type it and everything works right so if you don't uh, remember a syntax then refer the book or make sure that you have your bit in in place to make sure that you refer right so now having said that right so now over a period of time right when i was doing the training when i was going through the training i started developing this the sense of satisfaction whenever you are doing a programming after you finish it the result comes there is no no reference material that was there and at one point of time there were no books that were there where you can refer because the problem statements were varying and when you are finishing something you start becoming pretty happy that as i said it's a sense of accomplishment that uh, that you have right so that was in the training right so you know training got me interested in the software area maybe 10% right so after the training got over i was assigned to that time embedded systems embedded systems was okay. a niche area uh, in late 1990s early 2000s so uh, only the best of the best of the best got into embedded systems area and there was a lot of new things that were happening in that area so i got assigned to this embedded systems group where i was uh, doing development of displays uh, these are displays that gets into into trucks into cars i started my career my true career in um, 
uh, in these display software development or it is called as firmware development right so even though you write software these software are not pc based software these softwares get into into these embedded controllers and you have these softwares running with a very minimal memory very memory minimal. yeah i was just thinking about that <laughs> very minimal memory and uh, and also the processing capacity is limited because of the microcontroller that you are uh, you are using so there are many challenges that are there so i started my career in that area and interestingly i started working with the japanese okay uh, a small team of group of people who are assigned to uh, japanese projects now i can say to you these people are one of the best people to start working with because they are so hard working now if you are uh, working 24 hours they will work 25 hours they make uh, another one hour right so that's how good japanese are so and you know as i said we are working on displays right so you, know, uh, you should understand display is a product when you are developing a product you kind of get connected to that product if something is wrong with that product you feel bad if something is good about the product you feel happy about the product right so so we are making many displays so i i know i don't want to say company names right so that i work for uh, but i started working for these uh, oems that were supplying displays to to many of the of the big names big customers uh, in the in the automotive segment and many of these displays are are used in expensive cars we are uh, working on these displays if there is an issue it becomes a big issue because the car needs to be recalled for it to be fixed so it becomes a lot more important for us so uh, i remember working for, for this display product where this one is about the controller for uh, showing the gauges we are always used to this thing that the gauges are driven mechanically where uh, these are connected to a wire uh, actually this wire rotates based on the speed of the wire the gauges move right so that is what most of us are uh, yeah. are, are used to uh, but in 2000s uh, in uh, in early uh, 2000 when i initially started working these gauges were uh, were driven by stepper motors right so that was the first program i i started working in uh, so there were a lot of logic there was a lot of controllers there were a lot of filters uh, the first thing i thought was okay fine so it's a simple thing right so you know connect a wire it will drive why we need to put a sensor there then convert the entire movement into digital and then once again bring it in and convert the digital signal into analog analog signal and then drive the motors right so i was thinking that it is uh, it's, it's crazy but later i got to know that the entire thing is moving digital right now there is nothing called analog. Uh, analog displays right so most of the displays have moved completely digital and it was the early part of that transformation that is when i was involved in that and there were also lcd displays that were there in the in the actual entire display panel so a lot of learnings over a period of time i remember a time when um, when i initially started working on this display i've done a done a programming i was very proud of myself that i finished this because you know normally when you're a fresh graduate out of the college you won't get an opportunity to get into development first and then start doing these kind of high end programming and it's all done and it is ready for testing there is this japanese guy who came in he was testing it and he looked at the gauge displays the gate programming that i have done he was a tester right so and he has been doing this testing part his entire life he looks at the display moment he switches on he changes the uh, uh, the values you now it's all driven by pwm so it changes the pwm uh, signals and then uh, the gauges move That's it. Uh, after everything he, he turned back there was a japanese translator who was there of course they taught us japanese as well so we can we can understand a little bit he was saying that there is something wrong with the display right so there is a flicker in uh, a small flicker in the stepper motor uh, moment wow uh, i i was confident that there was no flicker so saying no there is no flicker no yeah. there is flicker he said okay fine let's let's understand whether there is a flicker or not so put an oscilloscope in there we were looking at waveforms and what he said was right yeah. there was a flicker and uh, the logic that uh, i have written for the stepper motor control had a overflow stack overshoot that there and because of that uh, it was beyond a certain value the, the, the stepper motor control it actually comes down one and then it moves comes down one and then it moves so 
it made me think about the importance of everything that we do in our in our program right so you know we we think that we are doing the best of the best programming but experience tells you a lot more on um, on what true programming is all about and i want to switch into this product right so it's very important that that we understand it is not the software it is a product that you are developing uh, software yes it gets into a product for me you now when you are saying a display a display is has a hardware okay it has a microcontroller with a program and you build the board and then the software gets into it's a firmware right it gets into the it's burnt gets burnt into the uh, controller and then it actually drives the display and when the product get, gets used by lot of our customers the customers needs to feel that it is a good quality product right so it's all driven from customers and we are delivering it back to customers you know we need to make sure that we capture the requirement properly we make sure that we deliver a product that can make uh, the customers ecstatic right they, they should they should feel that they are getting more than what the money that they are paying particularly these uh, these expensive vehicles right so that are having these kind of displays they need to feel that uh, the quality right so and the other thing that i learned was i was working for these japanese uh, customers japanese don't release their product worldwide they release the product first in japan right so i'm not sure how many people know it will be the seventh or eighth iteration of the product that gets released out outside of japan they actually release the product in japan and these japanese customers they use the product they give feedback and over a period of time they take this feedback and they improve the product so that the, the product that gets out worldwide is uh, is the best of the best of the best okay now everybody talks about oh uh, anything that gets out of japan right now uh, now there are there are a lot of other players that say they, they their quality is very good but I, I, when i started working they always say japanese quality is the best right now it was uh, it was amazing the way they started doing uh, doing their development and uh, and and gayatri when we are doing our mba course as well there was uh, there was a mention about japanese and uh, how uh, they change the perception the quality perception of their products in uh, in us Six sigma yep. yeah and then initially when uh, when they started introducing uh, their products in in us it was considered to be cheap and uh, now uh, if you go to us right so most of the people buy a, a japanese car then uh, it's a honda or toyota that has uh, that has good resale value than any other car right so you know uh, very very nice in fact this one story you covered from the time you started your engineering uh, and the uh, learning from there and then it's a great to actually perfection and uh, precision right and you also touched upon product can i uh, hear from you how you moved from a more as a service providing a service providing a software towards the product from a designing a product looking at the product end to end and and looking at it from an engineering mindset right you are you are talking about controller you are talking about embedded how did that move happen and how did you really skill yourself okay very good it's a very 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 uh, good and pertinent question right so i said to you that i started working with uh, with the japanese customers right so the one thing i learned is <clears throat> it is not what the exact software or exact piece that you write uh, it is very important that you understand where it fits in and what is the entire system that you are developing what is that that is going to your customers right so that's what the product is right now many times as it applies to the other products that we develop right even the full software products that we develop as well uh, when a module is assigned or when a task is assigned uh, people start developing or start programming for that particular task all they want to know is what they need to do that that small box okay now this is looking at one one single piece of of rock that you are cutting for a big castle if you don't understand the big castle that you are building if you are looking at only that one rock that you are cutting you have lost that itself right? sense so, of purpose right sense yeah. it sense of purpose will be completely 
completely and lost right so you know for you the for any any engineer any software the engineer it's very important to you understand the bigger picture right so now i have seen uh, some of my leaders uh, over a period of time uh, retrain that particularly because we were uh, we were in the product domain uh, the people who grew within our group were the people who were getting the bigger picture right so even though we were working on a small piece it's very important you, you understand the bigger piece and where your small piece fits fits in and what happens is when when you understand the bigger picture what is that you are building you tend to make changes in the way you are developing you start giving more ideas right so you start getting ideas on why it should be done this way why can't it be done different so you start improving on the product itself right so and uh, now it gives you a connect to the product it gives you a connect to the customer and uh, it gives you a sense of purpose why you are working right so so it's very important that anybody whichever area they are working on they need to have a sense of purpose for them to be engaged truly engaged in the work that they are doing it gives them a, a inner satisfaction right so i cannot work without satisfaction if somebody gives me go do this okay uh, it becomes very difficult for me to go and work until unless i understand why i should do it right so now you should always start with why right so there is a you know there is a, a book by uh, simon sinek yeah. so start with why right so you know it's a good book right so you know, for for some other people to read it actually you know start with why right so have that purpose sense of purpose and that is what made me move into a product development and you know, it's a mindset shift right so that's that's the reason why i moved into product development and that's the reason why i joined a product organization rather than be, being in the uh, in the service organization and once i moved into the product organization i started growing in the product uh, career path i became a product manager then i became a, a manager who's taking care of multiple products and so on and so forth so right so so uh, it's a passion right so that's what i would say uh, now once uh, it's very addictive as well once you develop a good product it, it succeeds then uh, Uh, you want to develop another good product that is successful then you want to develop another good product that is successful right so you you get you keep getting into into the product development cycle so it's uh, it's amazing and a product as i said uh, has multiple pieces right so if you if you ask uh, some other products that we develop it as a hardware it has a software it has so many other things that needs to come together the communication network needs to be there uh, Or it needs to communicate with each other. So there are so many aspects that are there when it comes to product. Uh, in fact, your current your uh, caterpillar is one of the harbingers of IoT. Today, IoT is such a hot topic everywhere, right? Internet of Things. But caterpillar actually put it first in deepest of the mind or hardest of the places to reach. I think uh, uh, I would say that you know you guys are really the forerunners in terms yeah. of doing it. absolutely absolutely you know you are right right so as a, as a company caterpillar uh, uh, is for us in iot in autonomy there are a lot of areas where uh, uh, we are doing doing pretty good and uh, it's all the product mindset that's what i would say right so it's very important uh, all said and done you understand the customer you understand the customer need and you start developing products that would satisfy that need now uh, it's Agreed. it's very 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 important so how did you skill yourself i know see, uh, having a mindset is one thing but from a skilling perspective right was there how did you skill yourself towards the becoming a product leader because it means that uh, you might have to have to have some kind of unlearning and might have done some learning what kind of a journey did you take so very very good question right so you know the unlearning is that uh, you should forget that you are a software developer Okay. Right. You know, whenever uh, you look at everything as uh, code and syntax and everything, right? So uh, that's the only thing that uh, uh, you will see. At some point of time, right, an early point of time in my in my career, I uh, I went through product development training, right? So where uh, 
they talked about what is the meaning of product development right so this is i am talking about customers understanding customer needs and uh, and making sure that we are uh, developing a product for our customer needs and so on and so forth right so so those are all things that uh, we learned during uh, that period um, there was a period when you know, uh, early 2000s was a period when india was more of a service a service center right or uh, the, you know if go to any company uh, we be getting a bunch of requirements it is about developing things for that particular piece the integration portion of it was primarily done in uh, uh, in the country that is actually outsourcing the job it was it was a typical outsourcing center Right, so we, you know, uh, Gayatri, you have also been there in this. In this yeah, yeah, they did. I remember that. <laughs> so, so all we were getting was modules after modules after modules, right? And uh, in many cases, you know, there will be ten uh, modules that will be given to uh, for development, and uh, it will be ten teams that will be working, and these teams won't be even talking to each other. Right, so we cannot even connect the product. Right, so we all we will know is the module. What is the input? What is the output? Have we got the output? Have we tested it? We are happy. Right, so you talked about the change that we had to go through is uh, is primarily uh, in uh, I think it will be two thousand two or two thousand three when we first got a full product delivery. Right, so when I said that we we actually uh, went into this product uh, training when we had the full product delivery. for which we had to go through this training when we went through this training it was uh, uh, at the time it was done by uh, a person uh, of uh, of non indian origin uh, he brought in this this idea that whatever work you do you connect back with why you are doing that work and connecting back to the customer and understanding the profile of the customer why is he asking for it what is in it for him right so uh that is uh the genesis for uh, my move into a product development uh, leader or product leader and after that there are many other trainings and programs that i have attended on how we develop product and how we get requirements for making sure that we are developing a good product right so then there is there are many things on uh, many many programs that are there on product development now you see lot more programs that are coming up on product development because as a country india as well is moving from a service kind of country to more of a product development kind of a country where we are starting to develop more and more products it's lot more visible in the in the software industry uh, than in in many of the other industries right so so that's 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 heading in that uh, in that direction is what i would say but the key Uh, to uh, to product uh, development is the mindset change uh, rather than anything else right so you can own attain a ton of a ton of trainings but you won't make this make the change until unless your mindset changes from uh, from being a software developer to a product developer right that shift uh, is the key Right, so you know wherever, whichever area they are working, it's it's very important that shift happens. Once the shift happens, then you cannot go back either way. So you cannot do, you cannot do. You now, if somebody gives you do this uh, program and give it to me, they say, why you need need this program? Where are you going to use it? Right? How are you going to use it? Who are the people who are going to use it? All these questions will come out. Uh, now you can see these are all the questions that I am asking right now. Right? So now initially when I started, I wouldn't ask these questions. Right? So these are things that comes up. i think uh, uh, in fact uh, as you speaking about uh, making the product leap right uh, right now if you look at indian uh, software industry also you have lots of people who are in the product for it that was not the case earlier if you look at it now people are uh, building products in the cloud products as a as a, a saas product so a lot of those things have, have happened but that was far and very very few in between that has happened i think it's in, it's important to see leaders like you who have taken that leap only because of that i think we are today as we are right yeah so it was very early right so i know and uh, you also know that uh, i spent some time in the in the us a couple of times and that also made a huge uh, huge change in uh, in how products get built so many people don't understand that it's not just like that going and building a product Right, so you need to make sure that you are securing the funding 
for for building a, a product many people who are doing um, a part of uh, the product or the programming for a product don't understand how it is these people get approval to go and build this product what are all the elements that you need to look at to go and get approval that's the next part of it right so you know you should understand how to go and secure funding for a product how we put a business case together to make sure that you build the product now what are the commercials that are there in building the product right so it's a product development has many aspects right so you know one is making sure that you're putting the business case then you are making sure that you are understanding the customer requirements you are building the product once you are building the product how are you going to support the product you know how uh, is the product going to become obsolete right so when you, when it is going to become obsolete how are you going to manage the product up, up, uh, you know obsolescence management for that product and how are you going to do a sunset of the product and how are you going to bring a new product in that is going to replace this product and how are you going to make sure that the customers move to this new product rather than moving to some other product that your competitor is going to bring in right so it's a big thing right so this is not just one small piece of piece of it you once you start seeing the bigger picture you become better product engineers rather than you know i won't call software engineers right you start becoming better product engineers you being product engineers uh, you are naturally lot 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 bigger than a simple software engineer right so that's what i would say excellently well put in fact uh, you you spoke about the next level of evolution your own uh, evolution right after a product leader you become a business leader when it comes to business leader you talk about what type of a research that goes in to even start a, a product or how why that is required and uh, it, it looking at it from a customer's perspective so um, one of the things that are running in my mind you mentioned about being in us we spoke about some of the japanese clients so what made you move is it for your own uh, sense of uh, upskill yourself how did that decision happen and talking about decisions what were the few decisions that you have taken you spoke about moving from services to product you spoke you speak about you know being very intentional about being in the engineering sector right so what are the few key decisions that you have taken that you can share of course without the confidentiality issues yeah yeah so key decision moving back to india right so now i was uh, in line for uh, for getting a, a green card at some point of time so uh, there was a time when i was thinking uh, you know you always reflect back at times right so i think it was in some time in 2000 late 2005 2006 when i was I was working uh, uh, working in the us um, i was thinking about what next right so what do you do do next yeah you are uh, you are an engineer you are developing uh, uh, products and and uh, what should i do next so right around that time uh, the organization that i was working in was uh, was setting up a, a center in india and they were asking okay uh, uh, is there anybody wants to go and uh, run this business of setting up this center the center is going to have responsibility for such and such products and uh, do you want to go and uh, do that you know the, the fact is no, no it's uh, i didn't even talk to my uh, my wife I said yeah i'm going <laughs> so when i went came back and i said to my wife you know what um, i've decided we're going back you can understand you know, working in the us and settling in the us uh, getting green card is many people's uh, dream you know, the only thing i can say is uh, how i didn't have that as what i'm working on and i'm able to add something uh, uh, something for uh, for my career uh, for my happiness portion standpoint what brings happiness is product development uh, have this uh, brahma vishnu and shiva right so uh, i am uh, uh, you know i would say that i am more of uh, more of this uh, this this brahma gene and uh, and a little bit of uh, of the vishnu gene rather than uh, uh, this one, right? so <laughs> more about uh, creation right so what gives me more happiness is is making sure that we uh, 
uh, we create new teams, we create new things, right? So it gives me happiness and uh, and there was an op- this opportunity to to make sure that I can create something something new and uh, and that's one of the reasons why I, I moved back. Right? It was it was a proposal that I just cannot uh, cannot say no. Right? So now it was uh, uh, it was it was meeting all of uh, all of uh, my criteria. Right? I'm not sure whether in this session you have talked about there's this concept called not star. Right? So everybody you know, uh, has. Uh, there's something called star heart dollar. Uh, now, guys, okay. I'm not whether you've heard of this, right? So, you know, star is somebody's strength, right? Heart is somebody's passion. And dollar, whatever work you do, you need to make some amount of money to run your family. I mean, you take it as in a Venn diagram, you have uh, three circles. You put yep. these circles close to each other. There is an intersection point, which is an intersection of your passion, an in- intersection of your strength, and the intersection where you are getting enough money for you to yeah. In right. fact, we call this as Aikigai. I don't know whether you have heard this term, Aikigai. And uh, the fourth Venn diagram that you are talking these days gets, gets added is the environment consciousness. Are we doing the right thing for the Mother Earth? So, yeah. I think if you add the fourth one, I think that makes perfect sense. It, perfect sense. So, so I, I just wanted to make sure. Now, so, so this was uh, in the right at the intersection point. So I was not able to say no. So I said, you know what? I am, I'm going to I'm going to move back. I'm going to be happy. Right. So because it, it's playing my strength, my passion. And also there was enough money for me to, to run my family. So, uh, so that's one of the reasons why I moved back. And this was, I would say, this was the biggest decision that I had to make because pretty much my green card was in process. And the, you know, the day I said I'm going to move was that was the day I had my labor clearance. So, so, so that is, uh, no, it's it's very, it's, a, it's an interesting time. That's what I would say. But, uh, uh, but it was an amazing decision that I made. Right. So even now, I would say that that was one of the best uh, decisions that I have made in my. Uh, entire career moving back uh, it uh, it was satisfying that and i was also very happy that i was able to bring in the learnings that i have had in my in my career and uh, build more uh, more product leaders uh, in the team that i moved back in um, and grow the team right uh, make it bigger um, and also uh, contribute towards uh, uh, the product transition uh, in India, that's what I know. So that's that's what I would say. That's very well put, uh, woman. As I said, no, I think uh, you're one of the pioneering leaders who made that product transition happen, right? So what happens is there are a handful of companies who have done that transition, and that by in itself has seeded so many startups, and you see so many unicorn companies. I can't even call them startups anymore. I just I should just say. Product company. After Zomato's listing, you should say that all these are uh, super unicorns, probably. <laughs> super unicorns. <laughs> I think oh. we have to just play a catch-up game on these terms. Super unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> very, very well put, Bhuvan. I think thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, I know it's it is personal decision uh, in terms of what guides you. All of us have those guiding stars and uh, angels with us, so we, who in, innately do that. I think that needs courage. To do that because um, your, if your life is going in one direction you need to even change it slightly it needs a bit of courage I think kudos to you for making that uh, leap of faith yeah good good, good right. more that's what I would say <laughs> all right yeah I know we are all on time so any uh, final thoughts that you want to share with our listeners any anything that you would like to uh, me passing wisdom you know, the, the one thing i would say is you now as we start doing these product development as we move into into whichever whichever work that you are doing many people uh, particularly in india have this uh, or at least the leaders and uh, um, and the people that i have interacted with in many of uh, of my uh, my roles i've uh, i've seen them having a, a mindset of oh i need to win i so it's about it's about winning, right? So it's about doing the best. Yeah, I I win. Okay. So what we are missing out is uh, in the roles that we are playing in, uh, in the jobs that we are in. Uh, there is nothing called winning. The, the one thing I would uh, or uh, uh, what I want people to uh, 
to have in their mind is we are playing a game right this game uh, is an infinite game it's not a finite game right? so an, an infinite game is uh, okay you have uh, you're playing a game you you win that part of the game it doesn't mean that you win the you won the entire uh, game right so it is just that small piece of the game and then you move to the next okay uh, there is uh, there is no end to it right so um, now because we are playing it for our survival for our long term success so you just cannot stop playing the game the moment you stop playing the game is the day that you lose uh, right so um, it's very important that people have the patience and uh, the mindset um, that we are playing uh, an infinite game and every day we make sure that we play our best to make sure that we are winning it for for us uh, for the company that we are working in and if you are working in india for india as well right so for us to do better uh, in india's standpoint we have so many engineers who are there um, the difference i have seen um, with my interactions with some of the leaders in india and some of the leaders uh, in other parts of the of the world is that they are playing an infinite game right so uh, and in india uh, because of uh, the culture with which we have grown right from our uh, schooling uh, uh, it's always about winning right so winning is just one small piece of it right so that particular point but it's it should continue right so it's it's about playing that infinite game so don't play a finite game play an infinite game right so that uh, you are continuing to be successful and uh, growing in your career and contributing something for uh, for yourself for uh, the company that you're working and also for the country very very well put uh, bhuvan i think uh, you have said something very profound in terms of you know not just sprinting ahead and not really thinking about long term think about long term and keep taking that valuable lessons you learned in the previous day to the next day that yeah. way you keep growing excellent yeah. very well well put uh, one very profound and i'm sure listeners are going to be very benefited and looking forward to more such conversations from you one i know we did, we just touched a tip of the iceberg from all your wealth of knowledge and thank you for your time today on a sunday evening absolutely thank you thank you gayatri for having me okay it was great uh, having a chat with you we thank siddharth for the music and anita for promoting the software people stories if you like this episode please subscribe on your favorite podcast client and spread the word in your network if you would like to share your story contact us at podcast@pm-powerconsulting.com